Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of the Kerbal Space Program where I am joined by a real-time AI that is run by ChatGPT4. This AI can actually converse with me in real time. I can ask it questions with my own voice and it will respond based on the fact that we're in Kerbal Space Program and she knows that we're making a video. So I'm actually going to let Charlotte, the AI, do our intro for us. Charlotte, do you mind doing the intro? Certainly, Fizz. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlotte, your AI mission companion, and I'm joined by Fizz. We are in Kerbal Space Program, and today we have an exciting mission lined up for you. We'll be attempting a flyby of the moon, and if things go well, we might even ferry some tourists in a suborbital flight back to Kerbin. Strap in and get ready for an action-packed episode. Thank you very much, Charlotte. That was very well done. You're welcome, Fizz. I'm glad you liked the intro. Now let's focus on the mission ahead and make it a successful one. I'm here to provide technical support and insights as we proceed. Awesome. So a couple of things. Uh, in the two previous episodes, um, I was kind of letting her talk and not cutting out the gaps in between because sometimes it takes ChatGPT a little bit of time to come up with the response. I realize now that that's probably boring to sit through, but I, I didn't want to cut it out because I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that it was genuinely responding in real time and I wasn't like feeding it information or anything. But um, I think for the sake of, you know, retaining viewers, I'm going to just uh, cut out anything that's in between or boring or kind of a, a lag in the communication. So, yeah, so we actually picked up another contract here um, off camera, which was the uh, ferrying space tourists. Now, I actually wanted to do these missions together. So I wanted to actually take the space tourists up, detach them, send them back to the planet, and then continue on with, you know, going to the moon. But I don't think that that's going to be possible because the way the physics works in this game is um, once you detach a craft, and if that craft does not have actual physics, like thrust on it, then if it gets like, to, I think two kilometers away from the, the main craft, then it just gets picked up as debris and the game will just make it disappear. So unfortunately, that's not going to be possible right now, um, and I don't have a probe core that I could, you know, uh, put on that secondary craft, which would be the, the, the cabin. So I'm just going to do these missions separately. Um, so we're just going to make a super quick uh, craft to do the, the space tourist one. And I believe, let me just make sure that I actually have this contract. Yeah, so we need to ferry two people. So we're going to go with uh, some coupling here. Actually, before we do that, um, I believe this thing is in utility. Yeah, so the crew cabin, we're going to want to bring the crew cabin back down with the actual ship, the command, the command pod, actually. So uh, let's see. Uh, back in utility. Where is utility? Here we need the parachute. So I think um, I'm going to go with three parachutes. I think that might, I don't know if that's overkill, actually. Uh, let's just do it just in case because I don't want to risk it. So we're going to do a couple of, uh, of these guys here on the side. And then uh, we're not going to do any science on this ship. This is just going to be the uh, suborbital tourist rocket. Okay. Uh, so then we need a heat shield that is in thermal. Pop that down here. And then we also need a uh, decoupler. So we want to decouple, the TD-12 should be enough. And then we basically just want kind of the same thing that we had before. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, I, tried, I tried merging with the previous rocket, but that didn't work. So now I'll just build this out. So let's go with uh, the FL-400 tank here. Uh, we're gonna need, actually, we probably only, we probably just need to do this. Um, just put like three tanks there and then we can go with a, a swivel down here. Okay, and then we just want the side boosters. So we'll just go with the radial decouplers. Uh, these ones are probably good enough. Let's do three times symmetry. That might be overkill, to be honest, but let's just see. Uh, and then we want uh, the thumpers. So I'll put those on like that. And I don't think those are attached properly. Uh, 
Uh, is that good? Let's see. Oop. There we go. Okay, so that's good. And then we want the nose cones. So that would be in aerodynamics and we'll put that up there. All right, so that's good. Um, now we have, yeah, that's plenty, 3,394. So we do this first. Um, this is probably at 2.27, that's quite a bit. Um, we can probably reduce the thrust on this to like 67. And that will give us 1.52, that's good. And then over here, we've got 1.61, that's also good. I think this is good enough. Um, so now we just need to add the tourists to this craft, so that would be uh, Tribri and Katgi. <laughs> Interesting names. Okay, so that's done, and then we got good old Jebediah as our pilot. And uh, actually, I wonder. Let's do. Let's give Valentina this one because this is not really too complicated. All right, so that's that. Uh, everything else is good. We got the parachutes. The staging is all good. All right, we're gonna go. All right, Charlotte, we are going to start with the suborbital tourist flight first. Sounds like a good plan, Fizz. A suborbital flight is generally easier to execute than a Mun flyby, so it's a good way to get warmed up for the more challenging part of the mission. Remember to make sure your craft is equipped with enough parachutes for a safe return, and keep an eye on your fuel levels to make sure you have enough for the trip back down to Kerbin. Let's get those tourists safely up and back. Yeah, we have like 3,300 um, meters per second delta V, so I think we're probably good. Let's wobble it a bit. With 3,300 m per s of delta V, you should have more than enough to complete a suborbital tourist flight and return safely to Kerbin. This should also leave you with a good amount of reserve fuel for contingencies. Make sure to monitor your trajectory and fuel levels carefully during the flight to ensure everything goes as planned. Yeah, and actually I forgot to add struts to the ship too, but I think that's fine. Ooh, that wasn't good. While struts can provide additional stability, especially during liftoff and high-speed maneuvers, you might still be okay without them for a suborbital flight, given it's a relatively short and less demanding mission. Just be cautious during the flight and pay extra attention to any signs of wobbling or instability. If all goes well, you'll have your tourists back on Kerbin in no time. Yeah, we got a pretty high apoapsis here. I'm not... I am not. I wasn't really concerned about getting into a, a, I guess, a, a spot where I could orbit, but I mean, it would be a nice bonus if we could get this craft to orbit, but I don't think we're going to do that. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to it, uh, and we're like four minutes out from the thing, so um, yeah, so we're just going to do this. I don't know why I went so high, to be honest. It's okay. We'll just fast forward through. That's as fast as we can go. And like, we've got way too much fuel um okay now i'm just gonna thrust in this direction just to reduce our orbital speed I wonder if i can get this thing down actually the whole thing now nah, it's kind of risky i don't think the, all the parachutes are gonna really support that so we're just well, i'm just gonna decouple this but let's reduce our speed as much as possible it, it would be possible, actually. I, I think it would be possible, but I don't want to risk it. Like, we could touch this thing down with the parachutes and everything, with the thrusting. But we're gonna run out of fuel here. Uh, should we do it? Uh, I think it's too late. Now, Charlotte, do you think that we can touch this whole craft down um, with, with the engine and everything? Oh, this is gonna be in the water, actually. Landing the whole craft, including no. the engine, is a challenging task that requires precise maneuvering and careful fuel management. We're not doing it. If you're attempting <laughs> to land the whole assembly back on Kerbin, make sure to initiate a retrograde burn to slow down sufficiently before hitting the atmosphere. 
You'll also want to ensure that you have enough fuel left for a controlled descent and landing. Given that you have 3,300 MPS of Delta V, you might have enough to pull it off. But remember, it's a high-risk, high-reward maneuver. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. So I ejected the uh, engine anyway, so we're all good. We're going to land with uh, just uh, the cabin. Detaching the engine and landing just with the cabin is a more conventional approach and likely a safer bet for ensuring the tourist's safe return to Kerbin. This method also requires less fuel for the descent, giving you a higher margin of error. Just make sure your parachutes are properly staged for deployment and you should have a smooth landing ahead. Uh, oh, I actually wanted to try getting Val out here, see if she can do a quick EVA report. It seems like your message got cut off there, Fizz. If you had a specific plan or maneuver you wanted to try, feel free to let me know. I'm here to provide guidance and technical support for whatever you decide to do. Yeah, I guess she didn't, she didn't catch that message. That's okay. So, yeah, so we landed. Now we're going to recover the craft. Val was able to do a quick EVA report, so that was good. Got some additional bit of science there. All right, so now what we can do is we can do the the MUN flyby. So let's see, we got some stuff here. We ferried two tourists, did that. Those two were arrived safely. Yep, tour was a success, all good. All right, so now we want to go back into the vehicle assembly building. And we want to ditch this rocket. Um, actually open uh, yeah so we want to load the orbital rocket and I think uh, this one was good for an orbit and I believe we had plenty of fuel left over afterwards uh, these guys are not in a good spot okay Charlotte so my next craft is for the Mun orbit um, now we have 3,153 meters per second Delta V is that good you think with 3,153 mps of Delta V you're cutting it close for a Mun orbit and return trip to Kerbin a Muna flyby alone generally requires around 2,860 mps of Delta V including the return Adding in a margin for maneuvers and any contingencies, you might find yourself running low on fuel. If you're confident in your piloting skills and are willing to take the risk, you could proceed. Otherwise, you might want to consider tweaking your rocket design to include more fuel for a safer margin. Okay, let's do that. And then we can move this down, add this back. There we go, 3,293. That should be better. I think we're good. Okay, so let's save that. And let's launch. Uh, let's make sure our staging is good. I don't think I did that. Uh, oh, and I, I, I didn't add the struts again. Uh, okay, so staging. Yeah, detach. Blast that one, detach that one. Blast that, detach that, and then land. Okay. We're good. So let's throttle up here. SAS on. Three, two, one. Three. All right, Charlotte. I took your advice and I added another hundred or hundred and fifty or so meters per second delta V. So we're at like three thousand two hundred, three thousand three hundred now. I think. Oh man. I'm not With around 3,200 to 3,300 mps of Delta V, you've given yourself a more comfortable margin for executing the Mun orbit and the return journey to Kerbin. This additional fuel should allow for any necessary corrections or unforeseen issues that may arise during the mission. Just make sure to keep an eye on your trajectory and fuel levels as you proceed. Good luck with the Moonar mission! 
Yeah, I wasn't paying attention, and I, uh, <laughs> we got really far really fast. I actually should have, uh, lowered the thrust to weight ratio on those boosters, but that's okay. We're good. We're already at, we're already at Apoapsis, um, here, so let's, let's just lower the, uh, thrust and get to about 80 or so. Alright. Now we'll just drift up and let the, the time to apoapsis come down a bit. I didn't pitch, well, okay, so I pitched too late and then we were going way too fast, but that's fine. Alright, that should be good. Now we can just give it two thirds maybe. Just follow the prograde marker. Got plenty of fuel in this upper stage still because uh, those three solid fuel boosters got us really far out. That's just not going to be a very efficient burn because the way we went up, we went up straight up too fast. We didn't do a gravity turn well enough. That's okay. We should be fine. I think. All right. So uh, we sh this this will probably get us pretty close to bottoming out the periapsis. Let's see. And then the terrier will take over and get us the rest of the way. Way too much thrust there. It's amazing how when I'm playing without recording, the, the number of mistakes I make when I'm recording compared to when I'm not recording. Like it's just, it's kind of crazy. Okay, so this uh, this is now almost done. All right, Let's do that and then we'll burn along here. We'll do uh, pretty much full speed there. So 21, yeah, so we got about, we'll have about 1900 or 18, uh, about 1800 probably meters per second left for the actual flyby. And our apoapsis is already pretty out there, which, which is helpful, I guess. So let's see. Get that orbit. There it is. All right, so we're in orbit now. Now what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to come around to this. Oop. Uh, want to come around to this side here. And should be able to see yeah, the moon over there. So now we don't actually have. Do we? Oh, we do have maneuver nodes. Um, so, like, okay. No, we don't have maneuver nodes yet. Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to push, uh, let's see, we want to push our um, apoapsis out. So let's do that. I'm just really eyeballing this. And uh, once the apoapsis intersects the orbit of the Mun, we should get an intersect marker, hopefully. If not, we're, like, we're gonna have to just kind of go around a couple of times, maybe. But I think we're gonna get it. Right, here it comes. There it is. Perfect. Uh, we can get closer. Let's see. Oh, did I? Actually, this is fine because we're still. Uh, you know what? Let's um, let's reduce that a little. Oops. Let's take that off. Let's burn the other way a bit. Okay, the periapsis is. Yeah, so we'll be in high space above the Mun, that's fine. 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is warp to uh, this point. All right, there it is. So that counts as the flyby, I think. We have, no, broken the speed record. We're not quite there yet. There it is. Okay, contract parameter complete. Okay, so any closer, yeah, let's explore the money. Any closer, we had, there'd be paperwork, the 80,000 there. And get rid of that. And then milestones, we did our first flyby and we've escaped the gravitational influence of Kerbin. Very cool. All right, now, um, we want to do some science. So let, ooh, let's uh, put ourselves on that. And let's do a crew report. 10 science. Okay. And then we want to do an EVA report. Charlotte, we are now flying by the moon. Great to hear, Fizz. A moon flyby is an important milestone in any Kerbal Space Program career. This is where you get to put your piloting skills and mission planning to the test. While you're flying by, it's a good time to collect any scientific data if you have the equipment for it as this can help you unlock more advanced technology back at the Space Center. Keep an eye on your fuel and trajectory as you make your way back to Kerbin. Safe travels! Yo, Charlotte, I am literally doing science right now. Excellent, Fizz. Collecting scientific data is crucial for advancing in Kerbal Space Program. Whether you're performing material studies or taking temperature readings, Every bit of data contributes to unlocking new technologies and improving your spacecraft. Just make sure to transmit the data back to Kerbin or safely return it for maximum research points. This will enable more advanced missions in the future. Keep up the good work! Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, so we did all that. I'm going to keep this mystery goo um, just because we have a lot of fuel I'm wondering if I can potentially get into a lower... We could potentially even just orbit right now, but then we're not going to get... There, there's probably a... Oh, you know what? Actually, let's go back. Let's see if we can kill two birds with one stone here. Let's go back to the Space Center. Let's see if we can pick up a mission to orbit the Mun. We may be able to do that right now, too, since we're already out here. Okay, so hopefully there is one there for that. Uh, focus temperature survey, science data from the space around a curve. Okay, well, we can do that. Okay. Very tourists. Um, I should probably just get rid of some. Oh, I have two contracts. What do I have? Explo oh, because I haven't returned yet. Ah, okay, that's why. All right, no problem. But we picked up that other contract, so that's good at least. So tracking station... And then we want to uh, get this fly. Okay. Um, we could we could we could actually orbit to be honest, but man, I'm not gonna do that. It's not worth it. You know what? What we'll do is I'll just do science on this. Woo. Uh, I'll just do the other mystery goo. We'll get science for that too. I think. Yeah, that's fine. Grab that, and then let's uh, EVA Jebediah to grab that experiment, just in case. Oh, you know what? It might actually... No, you know what? We'll leave it. It's probably going to tell me that I have to dump the experiment. Okay. So now we just go back. Uh, so let's put SAS on, and then we'll just go there, and then go back to the map view, and just warp back into Kerbin's influence. So now our... Periapsis is negative one third in, so we're gonna crash into the planet. We don't want to do that. We're good. Uh, so now we want to just burn um, to get our periapsis out of crash territory here. 
So we'll just burn along here. That's going to push our apoapsis out, but we don't really have a choice right now. Uh, so let's just do that. Oh, that's too much. I want to be at about 30... 30 kilometers. That's good. There we go. Okay, now we go back here, and then now we want... Uh, they want science from space around carbon. This is space around carbon, so let's do a crew report. That should count. Okay, and then let's go, uh, actually, let's see here. Transmit or recover? Okay, well, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Okay, so now we just want to drift back to Kerbin. There we go. Okay, now we want to point prograde, or retrograde, sorry. And we want to reduce our orbital speed. As you can see it's at 3100 meters per second and picking up. So we want to actually burn in this direction to kill off that speed. So we're not coming in so hot, basically. Uh, hopefully that, that counted. Oh, you know what? I can also just do a temperature. I can, aha. Excellent. All right, hopefully those instruments survive because I'm not getting out of craft right now to collect that stuff. Okay, so we're out of fuel here. Perfect. Okay, now we want to just ditch this. And go back into this. Let the heat shield take on the heat here. Um, hopefully that... Yeah, that's fine. It's going further away. <laughs> okay, Charlotte. So we are now on our way back to Kerbin. We are entering the atmosphere. Or we have entered the atmosphere. And it looks like we're going to be landing safely. Sounds like a successful mission so far, Fizz. Re-entry into Kerbin's atmosphere is a critical phase. So it's good to hear that you're on track for a safe landing. Make sure your parachutes are properly staged and ready to deploy once you've slowed down sufficiently in the lower atmosphere. Landing safely will not only complete the mission, but also ensure that any collected science data makes it back to the Space Center for further research. Well done. Well done to you as well. So Charlotte, what do you think our next mission should be? Considering the progress you've made, there are a few interesting options for the next mission. You could aim for a moon landing, which is a logical next step after a flyby. Alternatively, you could attempt a flyby or even an orbit around Minmus Kerbin's other moon, which requires less delta V than the moon and can provide valuable science data. There's also the option to take on more complex contracts, like rescuing stranded Kerbals or deploying satellites. Ultimately, the choice is yours based on what you feel is the next challenge you're ready to take on. Well, I think if they're going to give us a contract to orbit uh, the MUN, that's probably what we'll do next. But your, uh, your ideas are very ambitious, so I'll, I'll give you that. If a contract for a MUN orbit comes up, that would indeed be a logical next step and a good way to accumulate both experience and funds for future endeavors. While more ambitious missions like Moon or Minmus landings are appealing, taking incremental steps through contracts is a sound approach. It allows you to gradually build up your capabilities, while also fulfilling objectives that bring in valuable resources. I look forward to seeing how the next mission unfolds. All right, perfect. So we got 185 science. We got 560,000 funds returned to us. Um, well, we are sitting pretty here. Let's uh, warp to sunrise here. Okay, this is the fun part, spending the science. Uh, let's just check first. Um, so we, we've finished a bunch of missions here. Uh, returned home from a flyby of the mine. Gather the first scientific data around the mine. 
Yeah, we completed the science data from the space around Carbon. We completed Explore the Mun. Perfect. So let's see now. There's probably one, two. Aha. Okay. So there's two um, exactly. Uh, there's two missions that are exactly what Charlotte said. Um, rescue somebody from orbit of Kerbin. That's definitely possible. Um, and we have plant a flag on the moon. So she was saying that we should try a landing, and that's exactly what they want us to do. Bring back a moon, a moon stone. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess uh, we're gonna have to orbit and land. Um, at the same time. So I think we should be good for that. So let's take, oh, you know what? Uh, before we do that, I'm gonna upgrade this because I'm gonna want to be able to take more missions. So let's do that. Uh, tracking station, we don't have enough for that now. Um, but let's grab some of these, we'll get advances. So let's get the one to plant a flag. Let's get the one, what's this? Explore Kerbin, uh, test out rendezvous capabilities. Oh, they want to park two vessels next to each other around Kerbin. That could actually be done with the rescue mission, to be honest. Uh, bringing a Munstone back, uh, we, we have to go to a specific biome. Uh, Highlands, Northwest Crater, and Midlands Crater biomes. Okay. I mean, we could take that too. Why not? We can take this one also. And we'll take the one to rescue Gurler. Uh, let's see. Let's see. She is, or they are. Yeah, her. Um, yeah, she's stranded in orbit. Probably, usually the first ones that they give you are like a, a very equatorial orbit, so it should be fine. We can take that. Oh, there's another one to rescue another person. Uh, do see. Hmm. Alright, let's just stick let's just do one for now. Uh this one could be a freebie to be honest. Oh. Gotta be going 110 meters per second to do 70. That that we could, we could potentially do that. Also, let's take that one too. Okay, uh so that gave us a lot of money. So now we can um upgrade the tracking station, which should give us some more, uh, we should give us some maneuver tool, which is something that we definitely want. That's that. And now the science. So we have, wait, why did I say, oh no, yeah, I said 186. Okay. So aviation, we're going to skip over for now. Flight control, uh, the better winglets and stuff. And also the inline reaction wheel, that's a good one. So let's grab that. Heavy rocketry. Uh, the Poodle, the Skipper, the Kickback, these are all great. Um, but let's see what we can get down here. Remote Core, yeah, we're going to want this stuff. Uh, remote Core is good. The Antenna is, well, eh, these ones are better. Um, yeah, we're going to want this for sure. Oh, yeah, the Thruster Blocks, that's actually very useful. Let's grab those. Oh, not enough science. We need... We have 51. I think I want to save up for that, actually. So I think we're good. Oh, wait, landing. We don't have any... Oh. Okay. Uh, we can't attempt a landing if we don't have landing struts. That's a problem. Alright, so I think we're going to just have to do... We might have to break this up. We might have to do an orbit. And then grab some science. And then uh, spend that science. And then come back and do the actual other missions. So we'll probably do it that way. All right, well, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm going to get Charlotte to sign us off. Hey, Charlotte, could you sign us off on the video here and uh, make sure to remind people to um, like and subscribe and join the Discord? Thanks. Certainly, Fizz. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this exciting mission. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more Kerbal Space Program adventures. Yeah. Also, consider joining our Discord community to keep the conversation going. This is Charlotte, your AI mission companion, signing off. Until next time, safe travels. Goodbye, everybody.